For a more advanced preloader, we will not use a static text like loading, but we will add dots that will animate until the page loads. Now let's add some more elements to our preloader block so that it will look visually more appealing and interactive. Let's make the site-preloader block visible for a while so that we can see the new changes. First, disable JavaScript so that our preloader interaction won't affect our layout. Now as we did before, let's disable those two CSS rules from the site-preloader block. On the tree panel, select the site-preloader div. Go to the style tab. Below site-preloader, go to opacity and visibility. Click on the eye icon for both CSS properties. Now we can see our preloader block. Let's replace the P element and add some elements inside the preloader-content block. On the tree panel, select the preloader-content and press either Control H or Command H. The code editor should pop up. Remove the P element and copy the code. Press the escape key to close the pop-up. Now let's add the following CSS for our new loading cubes element. Go to the style-css on the editor. At the end, add the following CSS code. Dot loading-cubes span. Height 15 picks. Width 15 picks. Background, hash 666666, display, inline dash block. You should see three dark gray cubes. Now we are going to animate these three cubes for our new preloader. Our main preloader interaction is already there which will hide the whole preloader block when the page is fully loaded. So now these cubes should animate until the page loads. Let's add a new interaction to the site-preloader block as we did before. Go to the tree panel and select the site-preloader element. Go to the interactions panel. Click on add interaction at the bottom of the interaction one settings. Interaction two should appear. On Trigger, select Page Load, Load Immediately. On Target, go to div.loading-cubes, select Loading-cubes on the pop-up menu. On Animation, select Custom Animation. A timeline editor should appear for Interaction 2. Click on the selector on the left, go to Span, and on the pop-up, select Span. We are going to animate all the span elements inside the loading-cubes block. Using this selector, we're selecting all three span elements. On the Timeline Editor, click on the blank area to add a new transition. Click on the transition bar. For type, select Set. For position, enter zero. Click on Add Property, Go to Opacity, select Auto Opacity. For Auto Opacity, enter 0. Add another transition by clicking on the blank area on the Timeline Editor. Click on the new transition bar. Keep Type as Tween. For Position, enter 0. For Duration, enter 0 0.5. For Stagger, enter 0 0.3. Click on Add Property. Go to Opacity, select Auto Opacity. For Auto Opacity, enter 1. We have added Stagger so that each cube will animate after an interval. Now we need to repeat this animation indefinitely, but it should end after the page loads. In the Interaction 2 settings, click on Advanced Options. For Repeat, enter negative 1. 
Now check the page in your browser and you should see the preloader similar to before, but with those animated cubes. It seems our preloader interaction is complete, but we have an indefinitely repeating interaction which should be stopped. Otherwise, it will keep repeating. You can check on your browser, right click on the page and select inspect. Now on the elements tab, go to loading dash cubes block and check the span elements. You should see style properties changing even if our preloader block is hidden. Such repeating animation will hit the website performance if it is in a larger number and so it is always best to stop it if it's not going to be visible. Let's switch back to the Pine Grove website builder. Now let's stop the animation on those cubes as our page fully loads. We already have our first interaction for page fully loaded, so let's go to interaction 1. Click on advanced options, enable stop other animations, the animations to stop field should appear. This will stop animation as the page fully loads, which is our trigger. By default, it will stop all the animations if the animations to stop field is blank. This could have adverse effects. To stop our cube animation only, enter two in the animations to stop field because it is our second interaction. Now check the page in your browser again. Refresh the page and those changing styles properties should stop as soon as the page fully loads. One final thing we might miss is that we had disabled two CSS properties of the site-preloader block. So let's enable those CSS rules. Go to the tree panel, click on the site-preloader element, go to the style tab, click on the eye icon on those two disabled CSS properties. So this is an example of how you can add a preloader to any of your websites and you can also build different types of loading animations like we did for the cubes. This concludes our tutorial for making an advanced website preloader with Pinegrow Interactions. I hope the video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us via email or through the Pinegrow forum. We will be coming up with more videos related to the Pinegrow Interactions plugin and how-to videos for creating more interactive animations, so keep watching and following. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you in the next video.